Here is Bella, everyone. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Off you go. She just wanna play. Also, Tom is upstairs, but that is Bella. They're so cute. I'm dying. It's so exciting. This video is sponsored by Epic Games. Thank you. One moment. We are going to talk about alternative ways of playing handheld. I love playing handheld. I know all of you do that too. Most of you anyways. Like to play the Switch in handheld. Such a lovely time. Lovely to take it with you. Lovely to lie in bed and bed game and all of that. We don't always want to sit in front of the TV. Sometimes I just feel in the mood to kick back with a handheld. <laughs> but... As it so happens, Xbox and PlayStation doesn't have handheld systems like Nintendo does. So, how can we possibly play Xbox games and PlayStation games handheld-wise? We have cloud systems for that, or remote alternative ways to do that. So I am experimenting a lot right now with cloud gaming consoles, controller attachments to my phone, remote playing my PS5, my Xbox Series X, and in this video I am going to explore and compare a lot of the options we have available for us right now when it comes to cloud gaming and remote playing our systems. Let's just say it is a rather new era still when it comes to cloud gaming. It's still kind of new. I don't feel like it is properly established yet. It is not properly uh, optimized yet as you will see later in the video. And it can easily get confusing for just about anyone. I'm gonna try and explain it as best as I can. I am now allowed to tell you guys what I did in Los Angeles. I recently had the trip and I was so lucky to be invited to the Alan Wake 2 event to get a hands-on experience of this upcoming highly awaited sequel to Alan Wake. Me and some other content creators and Twitch streamers and podcasters and video game journalists, we were invited to this event to actually play the new game Alan Wake 2 and listen to the developers talk about the game, also the actors and a bunch of people that were involved in the making of. Now Alan Wake 2 is developed by Remedy and they are known for Quantum Break, the first Alan Wake also, and Control. Now I traveled with my sister and she was my cameraman and we got a raincoat and we got that famous thermos bottle that Alan Wake is known for. You collect them in the first game. Oh dear. And you know what? I met a familiar face. You know, leading up to this event, I was um, asking the people that invited me in email, like trying to figure out who else was invited. Maybe there were some YouTubers that I know. And yeah, I met a familiar face. I met Dreamcast guy. So that was a nice surprise, a familiar face. He also said that he wanna visit Norway pretty soon. And I said, yeah. You should. She's just as stoked as me to be invited. 13 like, years, can you believe? believe? And then the presentation started and I made sure that I sat next to Dreamcast guy. So we listened to the people involved in creating Alan Wake 2 and they were talking about their vision for the Alan Wake sequel and why it has been 13 years since the original game. And then we were brought to another room. Exciting times! This is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I know, right? And then we actually just got to play the game. A hands-on first experience for ourselves. Also, I want you to check out my link in the description to pre-order your copy of Alan Wake 2 on the Epic Games Store, with its full release being on the 27th of October. And I feel like this is gonna be the perfect autumn fall game. Am I supposed to say fall? or autumn. You know, grab your blanket and grab your thermos and cozy up on this game. And it's gonna be quite the investigation and quite the story, definitely. And I hope you will enjoy Alan Wake too. I know I will. So, today I will be comparing some games on the Logitech G Cloud and I am going to check out my phone with the PlayStation Backbone controller attachment that you attach to your phone. And to top it off, we are going to compare some games that are on all systems, both remote play, <laughs> cloud based and on the Switch, actually installed on the Switch. Just comparing graphics. It's a mess of a video, I know, but it's gonna be fun. So let's start off with what is the Logitech G Cloud? It is an Android-like cloud gaming device that makes you able to remote play your PC games through the app that's called Steam Link. You can remote play your Xbox Series X or S, your PlayStation 5, and you can play Android games. You can download Google Play Store apps such as the Xbox Play and the PS Play to remote play these consoles if you have them and if if you have a Wi-Fi connection. So already here 
here there are restrictions. You have to own the physical consoles and also be at home. And you can play your Steam games with Steam Link if you have a computer currently running Steam. But this device also comes with an app that's called Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta. And this one works without already owning an Xbox. You don't have to have an Xbox in order for this app to play because this is entirely cloud-based. But restrictions. You gotta have an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription for this one to work because this one is actual cloud gaming. The game is coming from the clouds. So the whole thing, it can be really restrictive and confusing because it requires a lot of stuff, this device I mean. Unless you just want to play Android games that are installed locally and doesn't require an internet connection. But that kind of beats the purpose. I mean, you have your phone for that. Um, so this one... It is probably good if the TV is occupied and you want to remote play your PS5 in another room in the house. It also feels like a tablet of sorts, doing everything that a regular tablet does. Now, on the other hand, what is the PlayStation Backbone? It's a controller that you plug and play attach to your phone that you already have. And yeah, I'm making that assumption in 2023 that you have a phone. So this is the thing. And it works in a lot of the same ways as the G Cloud, where you can remote play with the Android remote playing apps. It's a much cheaper option over the G Cloud because you already have a phone, remember? And the thing about just playing in handheld, I love it. And I mean, I talk about the Switch so much on my channel, but there are games that are not currently out on the Switch that are out on the PlayStation or on the Xbox. And I still wanna have that handheld gaming feeling. Like, for example, Genshin Impact is still not out on the Switch. I don't know about Tower of Fantasy. I don't think that will ever come to the Switch either, but that has dropped on the PlayStation and I'm loving it. And I will be making a video about Tower of Fantasy a bit later. Anyways, so now let's compare the graphics and performance with a game that is both on the Xbox cloud gaming service and on the Switch, Immortals Phoenix Rising. Now on the Logitech G Cloud with the Xbox cloud gaming app, it looks blurry, not very good. This game is coming straight from the cloud and I would say that it is playable if you are very desperate. And this method is good if you own nothing to begin with. But I would not prefer to play this game this way. I still think that cloud gaming has a long way to go in order to be good. Now, on the phone, with the backbone, I am opening my Xbox Play and this is looking better because this is local remote play drawing power from my actual Xbox in the living room on the same Wi-Fi and this looks way sharper. Already now we can conclude that if you own the system, remote play looks and performs better than cloud gaming. And now, just for fun, since Immortals Phoenix Rising is also out on the Switch, we are gonna see how that looks compared to the local remote play and the cloud gaming version. So here you can see it, it is actually installed locally and no internet is required. But I have to say that this looks blurrier than I remember. I don't remember this game looking this blurry, lol. But with this method, you can at least bring your game out of the house, out of the range of your Wi-Fi, and this is where I play played Immortals Phoenix Rising and did everything. So the conclusion, the Switch version is probably better for the long run. However, remote play looks the best. Now let's check out Genshin Impact on the G Cloud. It was downloaded from the Google Play Store, the Android version of the game. I tweaked the graphics to be the very best possible without overclocking the system. Now this right here is installed locally and played on the G Cloud's actual hardware, which is the Snapdragon 720G, whatever that means, and it looks passable, but no way near perfect. Now with this setup, I can absolutely bed game some easy quests, but it's not the most optimal way to play Genshin Impact when it comes to the harder battles and when precision is vital, as the PC version will always be superior. Now, Genshin Impact doesn't have native controller support which is so weird. So in order for this to work, you have to hold the home button until you get this menu and go to key mapping and manually drag and drop the keys on the screen. So the G Cloud buttons will work as if you are touching the screen since this is a touch screen game. So this is definitely one way that you can play Genshin Impact handheld. 
Now let's check out the Android version of Genshin Impact on my phone with the PlayStation Backbone attachment. Starting out, it didn't work. No buttons worked with Genshin Impact and the Backbone, so I did some research and I couldn't for the life of me find a key mapping setting even in the official Backbone app. And even after reading on Reddit for a while, I didn't become any smarter. In short and basically from what I read, the Backbone favors the iPhone iOS over Android phones. Apparently you can also use something called Mantis Pro, but that was not user-friendly and lengthy and I just gave up. While not fully comparable to playing an installed version, I could, if I absolutely wanted to, play Genshin Impact with the PS Play app remotely, locally, which requires me having a PS5 and internet connection with Genshin installed on said PS5. And this works with the backbone. Remote playing PS5 to my phone. I could bed game Genshin Impact this way, if I absolutely wanted to. This is way sharper and responsive. I think that this is currently the best way to play Genshin Impact handheld. Just remember to put the settings in the PS Play up to 1080p, which is a thing that you have to do in the settings, I figured out. And also the PS5 version of Genshin Impact has instant traveling. Look at this load screen. I am not editing this. That was the loading screen. Fast traveling instantly. So what is my conclusion? If the game is out on the Switch already, that could actually be a good place to play it. And also if you care about portability, taking your console with you out of the house, out of Wi-Fi range. Now, if a game is not on the Switch, it is much better to local remote play. And all you need then is this thing and or also this thing. But I do not recommend actual cloud gaming as of right now, where the game is coming from a cloud server. But what works the most for you, it depends on a lot of factors. Do you ever leave your home? Do you <laughs> never leave your home? Do you wanna have a device that you can also use as a Android tablet? Depends on a lot of things. As a personal note, I can say that I am using this one in bed to play Tower of Fantasy right now. Because, and this is like a hidden feature, I think, the buttons are so silent that you can bed game quietly next to your partner without waking your partner up. That is a pro in my book when it comes to silent bed gaming. However, I was trying to silent bed game with the backbone. That was not possible. The buttons are very clicky. Even though I just love the design, I love, I love the backbone. This one is like my daytime remote play thing, but I cannot silently bed game without. So this one, silent bed gaming. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. I like both of these things, both the backbone and the G Cloud, but they serve different purposes. Now the conclusion of the backbone, on the other hand, is that this is currently now my favorite way to handheld play my PlayStation 5 games. And have you guys seen that it has been announced that a handheld remote play accessory to the PS5, that was a mouthful, is coming out and it's called PlayStation Portal. And it's this thing that can remote play your PlayStation 5 games. In short, basically what this thing is, Except I may sometimes feel that it is a hassle to take my phone in and out of the attachment But I have to say that my phone with the backbone and with the PS Play app It is looking incredibly sharp and these are currently the best handheld graphics And what this is telling me is that remote play is really good right now So and therefore I have complete faith in the PlayStation Portal to be just as good, just as sharp, responsive, looking really good, playing excellently. So I am looking forward to the PlayStation Portal. I will get it because I am just a person for such a product. But remember that is an accessory to the PS5. It is not a handheld gaming device per se. So that is also something to remember. So are you guys looking forward to the PlayStation Portal or are you just gonna check out the backbone? or maybe the G Cloud. Now let me know how you are playing your games. I wanna know everything. And please hit like on my video if you enjoyed it and join the Discord. Join the channel if you feel like that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Check out Tower of Fantasy. I'm soon gonna make a video on that.